Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today we're gonna talk about the most played FPS game of all time, Call of Duty, right? Oh no, I'm sorry, I meant to say Counter-Strike. It's obviously Counter-Strike. No, not Counter-Strike, then surely Battlefield, or maybe Halo? No, it's actually a game called Crossfire. Apparently that 90s commercial was right, People did get caught up in the crossfire, and it now has over 400 million registered users. How's that even possible, and why have I only heard about this game recently? Well, a few weeks back, there were several articles covering some Chinese companies paying $500 million for the distribution rights for Crossfire 2. And yes, you heard me right, I said $500 million. The same amount of money James Cameron spent making the blue people in Avatar. And of course, this seems like an astronomical number until you read that the current Crossfire game grosses over 1.3 billion US dollars a year, or 1.5 trillion won. Now, I realize that certain games are far more successful in foreign markets than they are in the US, but this is a horse of a different color. And by the way, the gameplay in the background is me playing the game, and yes, it does look like the game was made in 1999. However, it was actually made in 2008 and can run on pretty much any computer built in the the last eight years. The easiest way to describe this game is it's essentially a free-to-play Counter-Strike clone, but not a Counter-Strike Global Offensive clone, more like a Counter-Strike 1.5 clone. Graphically, it's on par with the 1999 version of Counter-Strike, and it doesn't actually support many of the higher resolutions. The game has evolved in many ways though, with its alien infestation mode and other quirky game modes rather than just pure bomb defusal. As it's a free-to-play game, you spend your money primarily on cosmetic upgrades like character skins and weapon skins, and there are many weapons that can be purchased as well, but from my understanding, it does a pretty decent job of not being a pay to win. You might even say that this game has mastered the monetization processes that games like Team Fortress 2 and Counter-Strike GO later implemented. Visually, I will admit it's a pretty hard game to look at. My PC elitist eyes can only look at it for so long before I start to get volumetric lighting and ambient occlusion withdrawals. How the heck did this game take off in 2008 with graphics from 1999? Well, it actually makes quite a lot of sense once you start to understand the gaming in China. Only recently have other countries been able to sell consoles in China, and they aren't doing so well. The culture is already strongly built around PC gaming. Also, the average income in China is substantially lower than many Western countries, so people either don't own computers or own much cheaper computers. So when you release a game that's both free and playable on just about any computer, you have something that appeals to a very large crowd in China. 400 million people to be precise. Now, why am I telling you guys about this game? Well, I think it's fascinating to me that gaming culture is so different in other nations and that the world's most popular shooter is something that many of the shooter fans I know never heard of, let alone play. I'm not planning on playing this game any more than I have already for making this video, but it's interesting to learn about it nonetheless. Once you start digging around, you'll find all sorts of gaming gems, like China's own free-to-play Call of Duty game. You can't even play it in the US without using a VPN. Many of the games in China or Korea and Russia are actually designed around the free-to-play model to combat piracy and be more available to income-restricted gamers. It's a much different scene than I'm used to, and you have to wonder how much Western gaming culture is actually influenced by trends in these countries. I remember back in 2009 when everyone was losing their minds over an in-game horse in Runes of Magic that cost $10. It was like this astronomical price to pay for something in a video game and people just couldn't believe that everyone was spending money on this sort of thing. Yet this practice was already commonplace in many cultures. Anyway, this video is much less a review about how Crossfire is as a game and more about the concept of why it's so huge and so popular. I'm sure it's a decent game, lots of people play it, it's not really for me, and it certainly hasn't taken off in the US or Western cultures compared to China. That being said, it's not very hard to find servers populated for players, but if you are looking for a tactical shooter with a relatively inexpensive buy-in, you're probably better off going with Counter-Strike, at least if you play in the US. Anyway, there's some food for thought and some news on a game I'm sure many of you never heard of or could have imagined was the world's most popular FPS. If you live in another country and think that there are some hugely successful first-person shooter games that most Western gamers probably haven't heard of, please post them in the comments section. And as always, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.